Hi, Silverdale Dolphins. Miss Anita here, going to read to you, read with you, Snow Dog's Journey by Loretta Krapinski. When winter arrives in the North Country, it is time for the Frost King to leave his icy palace at the top of the world and bring his snowy magic to the lands below. Made of snow crystals and icicles, the Frost King flies through the sky, scattering snow on the ground and freezing lakes and rivers in the mountains and valleys with his magic powers. One day, as he flew over the countryside, he noticed a cottage wrapped in a forest of fir trees. A little boy and his sister were playing, and their happy shouts rang out in the air. Look, Anna, it's starting to snow, the boy shouted. The Frost King must be flying overhead. Now we will have enough snow to make a snowman. Pressing handfuls of snow together, Anna said, Olin, anyone can make a snowman. I want to make a snow dog instead. When they finished, they stepped back to admire their snow dog. You are so handsome, said Anna. She chose two pebbles for his eyes and another for his nose. Then she threw her arms around him and said, oh, I wish you were real. Every morning, Ola, Olin and Anna raced outside to visit Snow Dog. One very cold day, the little girl wrapped her scarf around Snow Dog's neck. Olin found an old woolen cap to place on his head. Every evening, they gave him a, a pat on the head and said, We'll see you in the morning light. They loved him as much as if he were real. One night before Anna went to sleep, she gazed at her friend through the frost laced covered window. Good night, snow dog, she said. His white coat twinkled like stars under the brightness of the full moon. Hmm. Oh, somebody else found Snow Dog. On the same evening, the Frost King flew overhead. The northern lights lit up the skies. The little cottage and white dog below. What's this? The Frost King exclaimed. A dog made of ice and snow just like me? He could be my friend. Leaning over Snow Dog, he blew gently on his nose. The Snow Dog blinked his eyes, shook his floppy ears from side to side, and wagged his tail. Woof, woof, he barked. The Snow King laughed and Snow Dog licked his hand. Would you like to come live with me? asked the Frost King. He picked Snow Dog up and flew into the night. Together they soared over the fir trees back to the ice palace. The Snow Dog glanced back to the tiny cottage. What about the children? he wondered. The next morning, when Anna looked out the window, she saw Snow Dog was gone. There on the snow lay the scarf and the old cap. Where did he go, cried Anna. When her brother saw how upset she was, he tried to comfort her, but nothing would stop her tears. At last, when there seemed to be no right answer, he said, Don't carry on so, Anna. He was never real anyway. He is real. If you believe in something, then it's real, she replied, tears glistening in her eyes. I know because he came to my to life in my dream last night. I even heard him bark, she insisted. She gazed outside, hoping to catch a glimpse of him running through the trees. But Snow Dog wasn't there. One evening, the Frost King and Snow Dog landed near an icy pond. Snow Dog saw a bonfire cast a golden glow at the ice skaters circling the pond. He crept closer, hoping to see Anna and Olin. The Frost King turned in horror to find the Snow Dog watching the fire. Snow Dog, Snow Dog, come away from that fire, he pleaded. <clears throat> the
The Frost King coaxed Snowdog back to his palace. Snowdog, I want you to know that like me, you are made of snow and ice, and you will stay that way forever. We are not like the songbirds and the beasts, for we do not have hearts. If you come too close to fire's yellow flickering flames, you'll melt and become nothing more than a puddle of water. That night, Snow Dog lay down on his ice bed and thought about the king's, the Frost King's words for a long time. He had believed he was a real dog, for he could run and chase and wag his tail just like other dogs. But now he realized he was only made of snow and had no heart. His thoughts turned to the children. I gave them nothing, and they loved me anyway. I wasn't a real dog, but they treated me as if I were, he sighed. Later that night, as the Frost King slept, Snow Dog left the ice palace. Flying up in the air was great fun, and I'll miss the Frost King. But I want to go home to be with Aunt Anna and Olin, he said. I want to be a real dog. His paws were soon caked with ice, and his ears were cold, but Snow Dog kept going. The distant mountains disappeared in the darkness. For many days and nights, he searched for the cottage that was once his home. All the mountains looked alike, and Snow Dog grew sad. Will I ever find the children again, he wondered. Finally, he spotted their cottage. How happy he was, and oh, so very tired. He lay down to rest and wait for dawn. When Anna awoke that morning, she saw the large dog lying outside his, her window. His coat was matted with snow and ice, but Anna knew at once who it was. Snow dog's here, she cried out to Olin. Let's get him inside where he can warm up quick. They pulled him inside to a cozy spot in front of the fireplace where the yellow flickering flames danced. Snow dog was too tired to worry or move. Content to be back home, at last he fell asleep. What's going to happen to Snow Dog? Anna sat by his side all day as the ice from his white coat melted into a puddle of water. When Snow Dog woke, he, he saw the yellow flickering fl flames of fire. There were puddles of water on the floor. Quickly, he leaped up. But instead of melting, his coat of snow and ice had turned to silky fur. And he had realized, and a real nose, he was so happy that he wagged his tail and licked Anna on her cheeks. My dreams came true. Now you're a real dog, said Anna, giving him a big hug. And for the first time, Snow Dog could feel his heart beating from the warmth of his love for her. You can live with us forever, she said. Would you like that? Snow Dog barked, roof, roof. He was finally a real dog, and he was back home with the people he loved and who loved him back. Anna made him a very cozy bed, and he slept peacefully in the dim light of the embers in the fireplace. Later that night, the Frost King came looking for Snow Dog. Peering through the window, he saw his soft, silky body of fur, his soft, silky fur as he lay sleeping. The Frost King thought, the dog is now real. This is a magic power I don't have. Lying in the snow were three round pebbles, the eyes and the nose of Snow Dog. The Frost King picked them up and dropped them into his pocket. He looked longingly through the window, and then with a sigh, he rose up into the night, scattering a deep snowfall before vanishing into folds of the northern lights.
The next morning, Anna gazed out onto the freshly fallen snow. The Frost King was here last night, she exclaimed, and I think we have enough snow to build a snow cat. So they did. Wasn't that a sweet story? Who was this story about? You're right if you said Snow Dog. You're right if you said Anna or Olin. And you're right if you said the Frost King. It was about all of them, but especially about Snow Dog, wasn't it? Okay. Thank you so much for reading with me. See you next time.